today we're going to be working on the draw step effect and we're going to be looking at some stuff in Photoshop as well as giving a little tutorial in history on uh, how this effect came about. Now the draw step effect known as in art as an example of mise en ambi, uh, I'm, pronunciation is off sometimes, the effect of a picture recursively appearing within itself in a place where a similar similar picture would realistically be expected to appear. This is going to create a loop which theoretically could go on forever, but realistically the only ones that go as far as the image does allow. Now, where did this first come about? The effect is named for a Dutch brand of cocoa, which it, with an image designed by Jane Massette in 1904 is since been used in packaging and a variety of different products and the effect was anticipated. Now this effect was anticipated in medieval works such as uh, Giotto's Stefanini's triptych as far back as 1320 uh, where you see this nice triptych golden, it was an altar piece that you would have and then if you look inside of it you can actually see the artist holding up the same triptych inside of the triptych. Uh, very meta, if I must say, uh, but that's as far back as the real, most earliest known uh, version of this. Again, it came, it became famous because uh, this this Dutch cocoa brand, uh, the famous illustration of a woman in a nurse's clothes holding a plate or a cup of milk with a Drosta cocoa package first appeared in Drosta products appearing around the year 1900. It's believed that the illustration was created by Jan Massut, being inspired by a pastel known as La Belle Chocolatière. Uh, the pretty chocolate girl. The image would now the image would pro proclaim the wholesome effect of a chocolate milk and became inseparable from the drugstore brand. The illustration reappeared in the cocoa package held by the nurse, including a recursive visual effect today known as the drugstore effect. So it was named after that illustration. Now looking at that work by Giotto, uh, the depiction of Stefanini uh, holding this very this. Uh, very painting suggests that it was originally had a significantly more elaborate frame, which would then been made, which would have made the relatively small altarpiece fit better into the large space that was old St. Peter's. The characteristics of containing a smaller version of itself provided one of the earliest known Renaissance examples of this drawstring effect that seemed to be common within medieval art. Now, as always, we definitely want to go over some standards. How is this actually benefiting us as learners? Uh, now, I'll be using the Georgia standards as always, but I'm also going to be using the New South Wales. So let's start off with the first one here. First one is that this covers the visualization generation of ideas for creating works of art. And specifically, we're going to be investigating research, various themes, interest materials, and methods, looking into old school methods to draw some effect. Uh, next one here, we're going to be engaging in an array of processes, media techniques, and technology through the ex experimentation, practice, and persistence. Uh, we're looking specifically at exploring digital manipulation of photographs, photo manipulation, love it, fun stuff. Experiment in creating photographs utilizing alternate processes because we don't want to have a normal photo, we want to have something interesting. Finally, here for the last Georgia one, we're going to be looking at reflecting upon, revising, and refining works of art considering relative relevant traditional and contemporary practices as well as personal artistic ideation. We're going to be exploring a variety of subjects in photographic styles, both historical and contemporary. Now, as we said before, we're going to be, we're looking at that old artwork by Giotto, 1300s, Dostra, which is the Dutch cocoa brand around 1900, and then there's this is all still being used today. So again, we're reinventing, we're not reinventing the wheel, we're just showcasing how often it's been used. Now, going to our friends in Australia, the New, the New South Wales standards that we're looking into, students will develop knowledge, skills, and understanding through the making of photographs and or videos and or digital images, Photoshop, uh, that leads to demonstrate conceptual and technical accomplishments. Now, this is a very technical based piece in that we have to use transition and then modifying the, sp the size of the image a smaller frame over and over again so we're actually having to make sure that we're tweaking the image down in multiple times to make sure that we are recreating the same effect as we go down. Uh, this is covering M5 which develops different techniques suited to artistic intentions in the making of photographs and or videos and or Im digital images. And the second one that we're going to be looking at today which is students will develop knowledge skills and understanding that lead to increasing accomplished critical and historical in investigations of photography and or video and or digital imagery specifically covering c5 recognizing how recognizes how photography and or video and or digital imaging are used in various fields of cultural production Again, you're seeing a lot of overlap between the Georgia standards and the New South Wales standards. So anytime that I'm referencing my standards as well as other standards from other places, I'm trying to see what those two, how they would correlate. So uh, definitely seeing the correlation between historical elements, looking at uh, historical investigations in one, and we're doing the same where we're looking at his history, 
uh, historical elements and contemporary elements used in artistic production in the States versus Australia, where we're looking at historical investigations of photography, video, and digital images. So, moving on into the piece here, I, I definitely wanted to showcase several examples so that you could see that it's not just a frame within a side of frame, but that is the subset, the base element that I want to be focusing on. So as you guys are finding these base images to use yourself, find something that has a frame that you can work with uh, some space that you can subtract that section of it from and shrink the picture inside of it. So a frame works really well, a uh, set of glasses, uh, the lens of a camera. There's all these elements that shrink into each other. I am not going to be doing the spiral effect in this tutorial because uh, somebody had found that there's a website that does it for you so I'll put that in the description uh, and you guys can have fun testing that out uh, just didn't have time this week lots of other things going on uh, so test out this this uh, application showcase your work again throw it up on Instagram tag me in it love to see you guys' work as well so let's go ahead and get our hands dirty and pull up Photoshop and dive into this big thing about finding these pictures you won't find a picture with something of a frame element in it we need the frame to offset the character with what we're going to be as uh, because as we're shrinking that character inside of something having a frame to work off of is a lot easier so here I have a picture of uh, one of my models so she's holding a white matte frame in front of her and I like having that glaze that eye off to the side so it just adds another element of focus to the image so first we're going to start off by masking the interior of that frame just do an inversion mask once you've selected that section and then we're gonna go in and kind of clean some of those lines up I, I like going back and chasing around those edges and making them just a little more blurred so when I use the brush select a brush that is a soft brush uh, something that has a feathering tip uh, you definitely don't want that hard edge the hard edge is gonna not make it as reliable and so the big thing I'm doing here a couple quick keys I'm switching back and forth between the spacebar which is the hand to move my image around as I'm working in Photoshop and I'm flipping the X key back and forth between white and black to to work on the mask again you're using black to mask an area and you're using white to bring the area back out of the mask so just kind of cleaning up those those spaces around once you've done that then we're going to select our image and while I'm doing is I'm pressing alt J I work on a PC so I'm going to use those for Mac users I'm sorry I don't know your hotkeys so select that alt J and we're going to copy that image from the prior one and what we're going to do is we're going to click it and then we're going to drop it below the image that we're currently working on so you'll notice as I'm making these you're going to have the numbers go in descending order that way as they're getting smaller you can kind of keep them in a much more organized way so that I can just keep adding those cells down 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 as I'm doing this effect it's really pretty much it as far as just going in and just kind of making sure that the image prior is synced up to look exactly the same as the one that you're using so you have that nice uh, effect of the image matching and uh, matching the image again uh, Dreste effect so that way you're matching it for that Dreste effect it's not really that much more challenging other than that however this is the basic image that I like working with so that we have something simple just uh, using it to create a copy within a copy within a copy within a copy and just tooling that forward And I just always like to finish off the final image as far back as it goes. Now you can keep going as much as the pixels will be there for you. I try and end on kind of a what the regular image looks like, uh, just kind of sunk all the way back because it's so small you don't really see it. But I, I don't know. I think it's like a creative th thumper I like to have in there. All right, so we're jumping into a more advanced version of this Rosé effect. Uh, for this, I got one of my images from um, Dragon. It was from DragonCon. It was a couple years back. So this guy is a character in a local horror feature. 
uh, that we have here. Um, I don't know what the character's name is offhand, uh, but I loved this picture so much. And so we're gonna be using the cutout of the brain matter in the top of the latex mask. So what I'm doing is here, just blacking that image out a little bit. And it really just kind of, so we're gonna first bring the head up a larger size because I wanna have that nice zoomed in effect. I definitely want the eyes to play down the lower third so that as we're looking at the character, we see a lot more, we're brought into that space a little more. And all I'm doing here, so using the quick selection tool, just isolating that section of the brain matter that's kind of being exposed to the mask. That's the part that I wanna be used, used as the frame. And as we lower ourselves into the image for that's what we're going to repeat down the uh, reason I chose this is because I like having the psychotic having the crazy kind of inside of your head aspect to it so as we shrink these down we're just gonna be playing around with the shapes going inside of that section of the head now this is something I, I notice as I'm working on it that you want to make sure that your your blend modes that I'm blending those shapes are together getting getting some sort of similarity to it so having something texture wise that that works with the same features that are more now as I'm moving forward inside that head I'm gonna rotate the head just slightly so it's a little bit more crazy going in forward as we go down into the brain uh, so it's not just a square straight on direct image cut uh, but there is that bit of a circle a bit of a cyclone effect attached inside the brain now one thing I will say this and this is one of the things you always notice after you work on the piece is I wish that I, I went in and used the clone tool over the section of the brain so that I could get the same texture uh, specifically from the gauze skin adaptation that th that's on this character. I think that's a better play than seeing the brain matter itself so you actually expanding the space that is in front of me. As I'm going down in here I want to play with the colors a little bit so I can really pop that orange and blue combination. The reason that you want to pop those two is because they're both so one of the coloring aspects I really want to push on this is the orange and the blue of the character's skin the reason we're doing that is because the orange and the blue are complementary colors uh, there are two colors on a color wheel that are completely the 180 of each other so orange and blue yellow and purple and red and green so just think of so when you're looking at these complementary colors they kind of it's the it's the total opposites of each other it's the same as black and whites so there's that difference between the two just a little thing if you mix complementary colors they actually cancel each other out so if you have a really good set of paints they will actually cancel each other out to a, either really like perfect gray or a black depending on the colors that you're using so I want to really highlight that level of the color and as I'm adding color into the eyes of the of the character here and going through the cur curves bringing up those tent elements i'm doing it specifically to highlight those oranges and those blues and the reason that i wanted to do that is because just from a color aspect i think it works the best now one thing that I'm, i just noticed you know as, I, as i'm re-watching this again so there's things we see in hindsight uh going back and adding more shadow effects i should have added a shadow layer gradient layer into the mask as i'm as i'm adding those faces together And one of those things that have you, as you're adding layers of color, and you can see this when I'm adding it to the eyes, I'll go back in and change the setting from normal to color dodge or soft light, or hard light, or hue, depending on how the effect looks. And again, one of these things that I think is most kind of underrated in Photoshop is that you need to get in and experiment. If you know how to make take a couple steps back and how to go back in and erase what you just did, and it's not gonna be too uh, structurally damaging if it's just one layer and you can take off that one layer and doing these little things at a time. It's a really fun thing to play with because there's no consequences to making certain decisions. Um, as I'm adding these layers in and as I'm adding the fill and I'm changing the opacity to each of these color adaptations, I'm trying to figure out does it help or hurt the overall image. That's a big thing that I trust to my students as well as students online is I structure to them as everything that we're doing, does this help or does this hurt the piece? That's what we want to really push.
finally here. So I want to get really creative here. I saw that there, I threw that example up in front of you guys before when we were going over the interim of the project and that is shrinking the head inside of the mouth. So what I did here, quick selection tool over the mouth, do an inversion on that. You can kind of soften the line on that if you want. Really for me, it was just kind of quick and dirty. Just want to get in and darken out the mouth section and then just dropping those faces in one after another after another. Now, looking at this person, looking at this, Again, I went on Google, found a picture I like, pulled it, and just using it for this. Again, this is just for, tu for tutorial purposes. So I'm actually, this is just a piece I'm just was playing around with. Looking at these pictures, um, I, I th saw this face and the kid's skin tone. He's got some zits on him. He's uh, that screaming, that, that angst. If you ever look at the pictures by the early work of Chuck Close, Chuck Close has a picture of a guy let me see here, I'm gonna look him up on my phone while we're watching our tutorial here. The character was Mark, uh, it was painted in 1979. There was this, um, it's a beautiful, um, technically it is astounding in the way that he painted this, but there's something to the same project here where I'm looking at this kid's skin tone and there's, there's a, there's, zits and there's an oil quality to it for me so i think about that and like the dinginess of the the character that chuck close painted and i wanted to really kind of bring that out so when i'm going into the curves and i keep throwing levels in there it's just one of those things that you, you keep keep playing around with this and you have no ideas um I want to get that skin tone to kind of give it that oily complexion i wanted that that factor in there to be similar to chuck close i, I look at him as a as a uh, modern artist who, who work is exceptionally well done um, and, I, and I just I'm inspired by him as an artist I think it's really cool stuff so definitely go check out his stuff but using that other image as kind of a groundwork when I'm playing around with these colors it's definitely a big thing it goes back to one of those standards that we were looking at where we're using artists and artworks uh, that influence us within our own work and we're trying to get those those elements in there as well so everything that you're doing again play around with this stuff play around with the different aspects I look forward to seeing different pieces from you guys so real quickly just re reassessing that we are doing these photography units Lost my train. so look at artists and look at the stuff that they make and you let it inspire you just the same as as uh, other artists inspired them as well all right class so we're going to wrap up there today just throwing a couple examples of this rostre effect now at this time most of us are doing some on some sort of online learning and i look forward to having you guys post this stuff post the rostre effect on instagram tag me in it. I always look forward to uh, seeing what you guys make as well and look for that creativity. As always, I do encourage you guys to do everything better than me and I look forward to seeing that because I love to see you guys uh, being as successful as you possibly can be out there. So get, get creative and get out there and do something fun. Let's go ahead and wrap up the class as we always do. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and share as part of your homework. And again, if you have any questions, comment, concern, raise those hands down in the comments below. I'd be happy to get back with you guys. Hopefully, um, Everybody's doing well, learning uh, during this time frame and doing something interesting and creative out there. Uh, other than that, stay safe, and I will see you guys next class. Later, guys.